Hello, I am Tanya, Blue Jay Vintage. I'm a decorative furniture painter, DIYer, antique booth owner, and avid outdoors woman. This morning I posted a picture of a dresser that we are getting ready to work on, and it's got hardware that's an odd size. So we bought the dresser for maybe 40 or 50 dollars. It's a nice high boy, it's got legs that lift it up, but the sizes of the hardware, so two inch hold to hole hardware is very hard to find, and then two and a half inch. And there are 14 pieces of hardware I need to buy for this dresser. So, Honey Bear is here today to show how he does this because I don't do it. Hey, Miss Donna, he is gonna come in and he's gonna do a step-by-step -step on how he does that. Hey, Miss Sandy. So, Honey Bear's here. We've got it all set up. I'll tilt you down as soon as he comes on in. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Bear with me here. This is one of my first videos, so I'm going to try and show you how we do this, try and help you out, answer any questions that I can. Like Tanya said, what we're doing is on this one, we're going from two and a half inch to a three inch on our handles. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug one of these holes and then we're going to drill a new hole out. And we're going to show you step by step how we do that. So everybody who doesn't know how can do it and maybe give you a couple tips along the way or at least show you how how we do it sandy says hi honey bear hi sandy <laughs> tanya's gonna be watching the monitor for me and answering any questions because i'm not good at doing a hundred things at once thank you miss sandy i appreciate that so if you have any questions feel free to ask um i've got some notes here to help myself and help you guys out um so let's go ahead and get started like i said we've got We've got two and a half inches here, and two and a half inches is difficult to find handles. Um, so we're going to go three inches. Now we could plug both of these and drill all new, or we could just plug one and drill a new hole for just the one. So that's what we're going to do. And what I like to do is I like to take a, find a dowel that fits the same size as this hole. This one fits right exactly the same size so it's really nice and easy so you don't have to do any extra fitting or any extra sanding to make that dowel fit in there and what I will do is I will cut a piece I'll stick it in there all the way through to the back side and I'll just mark it with my knife so you know how long to cut it and on, the, on these thicker dowels, it's a little bit harder to cut. On the smaller dowels, you can, you can just use uh, any kind of cutters. On the thicker ones, it's a little bit harder. So what I like to do is I just use my hand miter saw. And I'll just go ahead and cut it that way. I'm not going to cut on the wood here or on this table. So I've already got a piece that's already cut. You can see it's not that big. They're pretty, they're pretty small pieces maybe half inch or so and that fits right in right into the hole and I just take I use the tight bond two glue and I'll just take a little tiny bit of the glue and put it on the outside of my dowel doesn't take much because of that tight fit and this glue cleans up with just water on the premium glue, it has a cleanup time of just a couple of minutes. Um, I just use a paper towel. Um, put just a little bit on there. And what you can do, let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I just put a little bit into the hole. Now you can squeeze into the hole if you want, but generally what happens is you squeeze too much and it drips through into your drawer. And then you have the big cleanup mess. So I just put a little bit under the inside of the hole. And then I will put the dowel in. And then I will just tap it with a hammer. Hang on for the ride a little bit as the camera shakes. I 
we'll tap that in. I'll wipe the glue, and then I will use my dowel to just tap it down just a little bit below the surface. And the reason I do that, I'll show you in the next step. There we go, just a little bit below. That's, yeah, that's a little far, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. You can go a little bit further. What winds up happening is if you don't tap it down below the surface, because it's not a flat edge on the dowel where you cut it, it doesn't fill quite right when you put the wood filler in there. So you wind up sanding down, sanding down, sanding down. All of a sudden, you have a little bit of a concave surface. So if you, if you go down a little bit below the surface, and when you put the wood filler in, which we'll do on the next step, then you can smooth it out nice and flat, and you don't see the little tiny holes. So as we go on to the next step, you can see I've already got that one, this side in, it's glued, it's, it's dried in here. We've already got this one prepared. I don't know if you can see that with the camera. Right here, we've already got that one. That one's in there, about the same as the first one we just did. So I take my wood glue, or my wood filler, and I just like to use, I don't know if you can see, it's just Ace wood filler in the natural color. It's the only color I've ever seen it in, so I don't know if it comes in another one, but it's just Ace. I buy it by the tub because I use so much of it repairing the furniture. And then I've just got basic putty knife, spatula, spatula, spackle knife, whatever they want to call it. And I always start, start it with a clean. I always clean it before I start out because if you leave it, the old dried up crusty stuff on here, you don't get a real smooth surface when you use it. So always start with a clean blade. Just take a little bit, just fill in that hole. Just fill it in, pack it in there pretty good. And then put just a little tiny bit on the surface. You don't need to go too much and just spread it thin on the surface so you don't have to do a lot of sanding once that's dry. And this is always a good time when you've got the wood filler out to go over the rest of your project or the rest of the particular drawer that you're working on and fill in any other spots that may need it on that drawer. And you can see, I don't know if you can see here, if you can get the camera over. I've already done this edge over here because there's a little bit of a hole on the side here that needed to be fixed. So I just go over and I'll take and I'll find any edges that need to be filled or any holes in the wood that need to be filled while I've got the putty out. And I'll go ahead and I'll fill those in at the, while I'm doing this. Now the other thing that I like to do, because you get limited on space sometimes, like on this, where you've got seven drawers or however many are in this monster. You're limited on space, so what I like to do is try and do each step on every drawer at the same time. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll count out how many holes I need to fill, so I'll cut all, I'll pre-cut all my dowels. And then I'll go through and then I will fill all my holes all at one time. And then I'll go back over and I'll putty them all at one time. And then I'll do all my sanding at once, and then I'll drill everything at once. And that's the that's where you save your time when you're when you drill all at once. And I'll show you when I get there. You'll see. You'll be if you don't do it all at once. If you do each drawer individually, you're constantly changing your drill bits, because I use two different drill bits to do that. So you're constantly going to be changing your drill bits. So it's nice to do everything step by step on all the drawers at one time. Put them all together, lay them all out, so you can just go along and do them all together at once. Otherwise, you're going back and forth, and sometimes you get confused. You, you forget where you're at, and you might be puttying something. You putty up half the holes in one drawer, you fix half the drawers, you go back, and you forget that you didn't fix the rest of them. So, this is as this dries, we come back down to this one here, which is already dried. I've already got this to the drying step. So the next step is to sand this. Now normally I take my hand sander, but I'm in the house and somebody wouldn't like it if I used my hand sander in the house no, and made all I, the furniture dirty. No, no thank you. So I'm just gonna take the sanding block. This is a 150 grit sanding block. I normally use just 120 grit on my hand sander. 
Let me just sand this down. And you make it nice and flat. It's gonna take forever if I use this sanding block. But you just sand it, you sand it down nice and flat. And I'm not gonna show you. I think everybody in here probably knows how to sand. And you can do it with the sanding blocks. But if you've got, like I said, seven drawers or however many this has, it can take a long time. That's why the hand sander is really nice. But do it outside. And you get over. I'll move, let me turn this around here. So you have your finish. Once it's sanded, you have it. It looks like this. It's nice and smooth. Your hole's filled up. You get your dowel in there. You smooth the surface off here, but that's alright because we're just painting this, so it doesn't matter. And now we have just one hole, and it's time to figure out where our next hole's gonna go. And when you're sanding, you can take your time now and you can sand this down where you filled your other holes in. So what we do now, we're gonna measure and drill our holes for our for our new handle. So we need, our, we need our pencil, which maybe I didn't bring in the house. That's okay. I can do it without a pencil. Look right over there. There's there. pens, but I don't know if there's pencils. Yeah, that's okay. I can do it without a pencil. Okay. Thought I brought it in, but that's okay. I can do it without a pencil. Tape measure. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure my three inches first. I'm going to go from the center of this hole. And I, oh, I never use... I never use from here because you always get a weird measurement. It's all sticking up and I always go from, I'll go from one of the inch markers here and I'll just count out three inches. So we're going from the four. So we're going to go out here to the seven and I'm just going to scribe across here. So I know where my, I know where my, where it's at. You'd be able to see it with the pencil. But I can, I can see it here, and I can also see, I'll give you a little hint. I kind of screwed up earlier when I was prepping this, and this little dot is actually where it's going to go. But so, but you describe, you describe your three inches across here, this direction. And then you t just take a straight line. I don't know if you're going to be able to get that in there or not. Can you get it on that side? On what side? This side? Either side. Yeah. And I just take a straight line. Oh, hold on. You get it? There we are. Between the center of this hole and the center of the one we just plugged up, out to the line we just drew, and I find that center, and I just punch a little bit of hole in the wood, and that marks my spot, so I know where it's gonna go. So that's gonna, that's gonna be the center of our new handle, is gonna be in, in that spot right there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna drill a pilot hole. So I'm gonna use a small bit on this one. I, I just use an eighth inch bit. And the reason I drill a pilot hole is if you use a large bit to start with, what's gonna happen is two things. You're gonna have a hard time getting it started in that small hole, and you might be you might get it might be off centered. If the bit might jump a little bit around in the wood, and it might come off of that's where you have your mark. And number two, the large bit it may chunk up your wood around here. So you're gonna wind up with the wood splintering. So I like to use a small bit first. Like I said, this is an eighth inch bit. And I just, nice and easy, just drill the hole up, start drilling the hole out. And just go through. Get your nice pilot hole drilled. And you just switch your bits out and go up so your next size is going to be your final hole size, which I always match the same size it was in the drawer to begin with. In this particular drawer, it's going to be, it's a 932nds or a 1964ths. Kind of a weird size, but that's what it is. I just match the bit to the hole that was already there from the previous. And this one is the 1964ths. And when you start out the drilling, start it out slow so you don't, again, it doesn't chip the wood. And you start out nice and slow. And 
then once it gets bit down into the wood, then you can go ahead and just drill right straight through. And there you have your hole. And if you measure it out, you should be three inches center to center. So now you have your three inches, your three inch hole. Now on the back side of your drawer, and this is up to you how you want to do this, and if you want to, I always, oops, wrong side. On the back side of your drawer, you're gonna see the dowel on here. I don't know if you can see. Can get the camera in there, okay. The dowel doesn't go all the way through. So you can, if you want, you can putty that up. Hold on, I'm, hold on. Can you see there? Yeah. You can putty that hole up if you want, or leave it. I generally leave it there. I mean, it makes no, there's no reason to putty it up. It's just a hole. I mean, unless somebody can lose their underwear or something in there when they fill the, the drawer up, I don't know. Um, but if you get a little bit of wood splintering on this side, it's always a good idea. Just take and sand it down a little bit. Or if you get like on this top one here that we just did, this is from when we just started the first hole that we did, we filled with the dowel. There's a little bit of a rough edge there because the dowel was the same size as the hole going through. I'll hit that with the sander just so somebody doesn't hit their finger on that and it's a little bit rough. So you can go ahead and hit that with the sander, sand it down a little bit if you want. Um, that's up That's up to you, but just make sure that there's no splinters or anything back here So when somebody's putting clothes in their drawer, they don't hit anything um, And like I said, if there's any glue that dripped in there You can go ahead and fix that and the other thing I like to do on these when you have them out This is the this is a double drawer So it's got re it's reinforced here And it's got Let me get the can get the camera in here Okay, it, it's got reinforcement I go through and I always tighten all my hardware. Tighten the whole, the screws on here. Make sure they're all tight. And then I make sure everything on the drawer is nice and tight. And I fix anything at this point in time. Look how filthy I am. I know, you're dirty. I'm dirty. And then I go through and I'll tighten my screws here and here. And I just make sure everything, now that, because I've got it out anyway. I might as well go ahead, tighten everything down, make sure everything's in good shape. If my slides have problems, this is when I'll replace them. As well, I've got them out and I'm fixing them. I'll make sure everything's tight. I, like I said, I'll go through and I'll sand all this stuff down if it needs to be sanded. If anything needs to be sanded off, in, off the finish on the front, if there's anything rough, I'll go ahead and sand that down. Um, this is the time to do it. You've got the drawers out, you're prepping it. Uh, a lot of times we get stuff that the finish is just horrible. And the whole thing needs to be sanded before it can be painted and cleaned and painted. So this is when I'll do it. I've got them, I've got them out. I'm replacing this stuff. Um, so this is the time to do it. Um, I use this same method on... We have two drawers in this same dresser that have little decorative things in the front that are also put in with screws like this that are on like a half, inch and a half. And we're not going to replace those on there. So I use the same method of filling the holes that I did here to fill those two holes. And then I just sand them down. It makes it nice and smooth. And when we paint over it, you can't even tell that those holes are, were there or that there was anything there to begin with. So it's, it's the same method. You just put the dowel in, glue the dowel in, fill it with the filler, and... You can sand over it, and you can't even tell that it was ever there. You can't tell that there were any holes. So that's pretty much how we do the holes. Um, we have, oh, I can, I can show, tell you how I don't have the drawer in here. On the top drawer, we have two inch. They're actually two inches apart, and we're going to go to three. So we're going to do the same thing, but instead of just moving over a half an inch, I'm going to fill both holes and move outside a half inch on each one. It's a little bit more challenging. 
And you have to be careful when you do move that if you're moving, I like to make sure that I'm moving a half an inch or more. Because if you're moving less than that, you have you run the risk of drilling into the old hole and splitting that. And then it, it becomes a pain trying to fix that hole. And just get it can get ugly. But remember, if you do split for some reason, and it happens occasionally, if you get wood chips around this hole when you drill it out, you can always use wood filler around there and sand it down and make it look nice and pretty. And half the time, your hand, because your handle is covering these holes for the most part, just use wood filler, sand it down. And even if it doesn't come out perfect because the handle's there, it's hidden and it can't be seen. So I, anybody have any questions, comments, answers, suggestions, <laughs> anything? So this is also why it's important to have an idea of the size of your hardware before you start painting. I have done pieces where I get them finished and then realize that it's a size that I can't find hardware for. We have to go through this process and I have to paint it all over again. So... I have learned to measure my hardware first, see if I can find what I want. If I can't, then we have to change the size of the hard, the holes to match the hardware I'm gonna look for. But imagine getting your piece all done and then having to do this. It's not fun. No, it's not. It's not fun at all, but happy Sunday guys. And thanks honey bear. My honey bear's the best. He's in charge of all the hard work, and I just paint it and make it pretty. So we have a good good thing going here. So if you do have any questions, just drop them in the comments, and I'll make sure he sees them and we'll get them answered. So hopefully we'll have him back for more. If you like that idea, throw some hearts out there. Happy Sunday, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.